Got my truck in the shop today. I'm just about to put my new valve cover on. As you can see, I still got the stock one here for now, but my friend traded me this billet aluminum one for a custom tune and one of my six level switches. So I mean, usually I'm not one to spend money on how stuff looks, but this is a pretty nice piece and I didn't really have to spend any money on it. So pretty stoked on that. But what I'm not stoked on is how this breather setup is here. It's pretty restrictive. And it only has one 12 AN on the top here, which if you measure this inside diameter here, that's basically the exact same inside diameter as the stock breather right there coming off and down under the truck. So it really wouldn't be any upgrade over stock in regards to crankcase ventilation. Yeah, ugly that old one looks. So you can see they have like a catch can built into these things. So the blow by comes out here and it kind of drains the oil back through here. And that's why I gotta put the blow by, I mean the catch can on the driver's side here because you see the hose comes there and then down. Down there into the block again. So I'll be able to drain my catch can in there. That's why I want to be on the driver's side. But for now, just got this valve cover pulled off and I'm gonna get these old lines out of here. Get them out of my way and just see what we're working with here. Well, this little hose here that goes down to the bottom, I just, I just pulled on it and it just came off the bottom. It's not clamped or anything down there. And also I noticed right here there's a one-way valve in it. I tried to blow through it and it only goes one way. So it's set up so the oil can only go down back to the block, but no pressure can come up. Which is how it should be because you want all your pressure going through the bigger lines because the less flow, the less oil, or I mean less pressure, less flow, and there's going to be less oil running out of your engine. Hopefully anyways. So I think I'm going to put this one-way valve in my new hose. We'll see. So I just pulled that other crankcase hose out of there and you can see it's been like leaking through my coupler here because there's no clamps on it or anything. And this is fine for a stock truck, but once you put a big turbo on it and you run a lot more timing and a lot more power, it's just there's so much crank, there's just so much pressure that leaks from the turbo because the clearances are looser because it's so much bigger. And like the, around the rings as well, you're going to get a lot more crankcase blow by just because you're running a lot more cylinder pressures from all the timing and power. So th the stock setup is just not good enough when you start turning it up. And if you look here, this one uh, 12 AM line here, it's not even as big as stock. So that's definitely not sufficient. So that's exactly why I'm going to drill another hole in here and tap a half inch MPT and then screw one of these 12 ANs in there. So then I'll just double my stock setup and it should be good to go. Just put it on for a quick test fit and uh, it's hitting on something so I'll have to pull it off again and see what's going on. I don't have the seal in there yet, but I don't know, that's a pretty big gap. So I'll pull it off real quick and we'll see what's going on. Well, it's actually really obvious where it's sitting. You can see right here. Looks like there's a bolt or something there. Yeah, it's sitting on these bolts. So. I wonder if I should shave the bolts down or shave the cover. I know the seal takes up a little more space, but I want to be able to like punch that seal down and have a good seal. And if it's bottoming out on those bolt heads there, it's not going to be as good. So I could come in here with a grinder, grind that out or drill it out. I could drill it out. That'd probably be the easiest and the nicest looking. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna put it on there again so I get a nice, 
nice marks again, and then I'll center punch them, and I'll just drill them out so we just have a little bit of clearance for those bolts. It surprises me that they wouldn't, that it's not designed to fit on the truck properly. I mean, it only fits on one truck, an 03 to 05 Cummins, and they're all the same, so I don't understand how you'd miss that in your design, but yeah, whatever, we can fix it. All right, hopefully that fits. Just drill a little hole. It doesn't have to be deep, but I was only sticking up maybe an eighth too far, so just enough to get those bolt heads out of the way and should be good to go. So get this stuff cleaned out of here and then we'll do a test fit. Got that thing back in there and you can see now it doesn't rock around at all, so it's good to go. That problem solved. So one of the next thing is this uh, this 12 a.m. line here. Look at it, it's pretty tight. I mean, it hits on the firewall right there and if you go forward, it's like hitting on the plastic. So it's only got like one little spot it can kind of hang out in there. And I'm kind of worried if the engine flexes when I really torque it, if it's gonna smash on the firewall. Hopefully not, but I was hoping I'd be able to put this one at the back behind that, but it's not gonna, won't fit. So it's gonna have to be up here on the front. And I was also hoping I could have it pointing more back that way, but it was just, I can't, it hits on the damn firewall. Cause, I don't know man, whoever designed this valve cover, they didn't think very many things through. Cause that's not very good. So, <laughs> I don't know, I don't wanna go forward, cause then I'd be like going forward and then looping and going back, so. I'm gonna go exactly sideways. And then there's a fucking wire here. God damn it. So I don't know. I'm gonna go straight off. And then I guess curve the holes that go in that way. And down into my crankcase through there. What's up? Get some more stuff moved out of the way so you can kind of get a better idea how I wanna do this. I wanna bolt it to these two bolts here. And then have it just sitting like in here, as you can see, there's, there's just a bunch of room back there, there's just nothing there. And I was able to move that wire, Just to, I just have it temporarily over here for now. Let's see what we do with that, but it, it moves easy, so it's not a big deal. And I was going to use some of this to build it. This four inch square tubing. Because it doesn't really weigh very much. And I don't have any aluminum. All I got is steel stuff. Just trying to get that hose on there. Down in there, it's a super tight spot. Not very, easy, not very easy to get it on there. I had to like undo a bunch of wires and move them out of the way and stuff, but still not even on enough. I'm gonna have to keep working with it. It's just really tight. But I'm just using some uh, 5 16 fuel hose here. So it should do the job. I just want to get it on there first and run it back there so I can see the uh, how high I have to make the, the catch can because I want that to be always on a down slope so the oil always drains back down to the block. And if the hose goes like up and then back down, well, it's not gonna work very well. So just trying to get that hose on there and then I'm gonna run it through here to back here and Looks like I can go, looks like the bottom of the catch can will be the same as the bottom of the full filter here, so should be all good. So I just tacked this piece of steel in there. Now I'm gonna weld it all out and then grind it flat. So it just looks like one piece. And then for the drain, I didn't have like a 90 or anything sitting around. So I'm just gonna cut this like on a really sharp angle and then cut a hole here. Put that on like that. So then this, this is as high as I possibly can. So it's just like basically really flush, really tight with the bottom here. So the further I go down, the higher I have to mount this thing in the engine bay. There we go. Well, didn't look very nice, so I just ground it all up. Should work, I put some water in there and didn't seem to leak at all, so. Yeah, now I'm gonna build a bracket for that thing 
so I can actually mount it in there and see what I'm working with because I was trying to hold it there and get the fittings and try to put it in place but it's kind of tricky so I think I'm going to tack a bracket on there and see where it's going to sit. Just tacked a bracket onto the side of this thing here so I can uh, just kind of get some fittings on it and kind of see if it's going to work for me here. Which I think it will. I'm just going to have a 45 on both sides here and I'll go up to there. It's kind of an awkward spot to show so it's kind of hard here. And then uh, on the other side I'm going to use these 180 pieces going off the back and then straight down. Okay, well I got this thing back out again and just started to build a top for it. I'm gonna use a little bit thicker steel because I need to have enough material here to get some threads in there. So that fits in there really good. And then I'm gonna tap in uh, four of these on the top half inch MPT to 12 a.m. And then once I've done that, I can get my baffles or whatever figured out. I got these all tapped in there. The top's ready to go now. So I'm just trying to figure out a design on my baffles. I have it all measured out, so everywhere it has to go through here, there's no restriction in any way on what it'll already have. So then the oils and vapor, it's just gonna come straight down here and then it's gonna have to make an abrupt turn to go straight back up. If it tries to like flow nice, it'll get caught in here. And also, when you accelerate, the oil is gonna go to the back. So it'll be caught in here. So hopefully it doesn't catch some of that oil and take it with it. So it'll come in here, make an abrupt turn and go straight back up. And it'll hit this, and it'll have to go this way and then it'll go up, hit this, and I'll have to go this way, and then out. So there's not really any straight flow for it to go straight out. And these are on angles, so like the oil can flow back down. So I think that's how I'm gonna do it. Under here too, there's enough, there's a lot more room under here, so I could have like half inch, or I think like three quarters of an inch of oil fill up in there before it would start to become restrictive in any way, but there's I don't think that would be filling up. If I'm filling up with that much oil, well, I got some engine problems. So it shouldn't really be an issue because it'll always be draining back anyways. So now I'm gonna, yeah, start cutting some metal. Try to get this thing built here and hopefully the damn thing works. I don't know, it's the first time I've ever built a catch can, so if you guys see any flaws in my design, let me know. I'm always open to different ideas and stuff. Got my baffle belt here, and then put one in there, down there too. In the design, I was going to put another right here, but I think it's just uh, too close to the, the fitting. It just it wouldn't really do anything at all. It would just kind of be in the way, I think. And then possibly if there's like some oil sitting on here, then it would pick it up off that so I'm just gonna leave the top the top one out so oil flow will just come in and then back up hit this and then come around and then out so it's just like a big open area so it still has to go up really high before it can come out so hopefully it's only taking air pressure off here and all the oil stays down here so yeah it all fits good I just um, just gotta weld it in there now, just like that. Well, I got that top welded on and the fittings put in there. And then I'm just checking out the clearance for my rear lines here. Should be good, I can get my finger behind there. Should be fine, and then on the front here, I'm gonna put 45s, something like that, onto that one, and then uh, another 90 like there or something. 
and then another 45. So I think the next thing I need to do now is, yeah, I guess drill into this shiny valve cover and tap a hole for a fitting and yeah, hopefully that goes okay. Hopefully I don't ruin this thing, but worst case you could just you just weld one on there. So I guess that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I managed to get that hole tapped in there. Really nice and straight. Lined up uh, pretty much exactly where I wanted to get it, so pretty happy with that. So now I'm just gonna, yeah, get that thing put in here again and then I can start getting my lines built. Well, the stock bolts are way too long. I'll show you here. These are the stock ones. And that was. This that's the stock one for the bottom valve cover, and that's the stock one for for these. So these ones fit good, so I'm using those. And I went digging in my bin, right here. A couple seconds later, well, a couple minutes later, I found the rest of the bolts. Always seem to be able to find what I need in there. So now I can put them all in, and then uh, yeah, start building these lines. So I just put a 45 on the end of this really long hose here. Now I'm just trying to mark out my length of the first one here. I just measured it on the 45, how far it goes in to this piece. The hose butts up right to the edge of the threads in here. And that's halfway down the thread zone here, so Put a bit of electrical tape around here, and then I'll cut it right in the middle of electrical tape or something like that, and then hopefully it lines up. All right, get that first line in there. Looks pretty good. Didn't fuck it up. That's good too. So on to the next one, I guess. I well, got both of those lines built. Pretty happy with how they look. Should do the job, I think. So now, I just probably uh, pull those out of the way again and then build the rear ones, which just goes straight down. Um, we can maybe go under. So they're lined up pretty good. Just gotta go straight down. And then uh, I'll just build some sort of bracket down here that bolts to the transmission or something and then we'll be flopping around in the wind and then we'll be good. I pulled these front lines out of there, out of the way and I got my rear lines back in there. And they're just like hanging on the ground right now. And I'll cut them to length when I figure figure out exactly how I want them to go. But I I need to secure them under there somehow. So I just built this little like kind of bracket here to hold them. I just cut a piece of exhaust tube. I think it's like two inch or something. And then I just crushed it down in my vise, smashed it a couple times with a piece of metal on the side, and then uh, yeah, hold it in there nice and tight and snug. I'm not restricting it in any way, and I can just weld a little bracket off the side with a bolt and bolt it to one of the unused eyes on the transmission. And it's basically done. Then I just gotta pull it out again and paint it all. Well, just paint the catch can and the bracket, and then yeah, we're done. Just got a bit of paint splash on these things. Looks pretty good, so just gotta wait for those to dry now. So I just, uh, Cut my my vent lines here at the bottom to length, and I didn't want the ends to get all frayed because it's not gonna have a fitting on here. So I just used some heat shrink. It turned out really nice. So that should be good to go now. So it's just some standard heat shrink like this. Put it on there. It's good to go. So now I'm just kind of waiting around for my paint to dry, and then I can put it all back together. Oh yeah, I guess I can pull this back off and 
you need to put some thread tape on that, that fitting in there. And then I'm just waiting on paint. Well, I was able to keep this pipe up here and just pull the one-way valve out. I didn't have to cut it or anything, so I could reuse it, I guess, but probably never happen. So yeah, I got my one-way valve here. I gotta uh, somehow get it in down there somewhere. I should have put it in before I put the hose on, but I, I didn't think of it. So I'm gonna dig in there and try to get this valve in there somewhere. Well, this one-way valve here just fits so perfect in the 716 hose. Like I had to heat it up to get it in there, but now it's like a it's like a push lock fitting, so it's never coming out of there. And I won't have to put a clamp on it either, so pretty stoked on that. Just a little bit cleaner look. And I just got the other side, just cut it right there. So I'll put this in there, and then I'll feed it all back through again, back there. Well, paint's dry. I managed to get it in there without scratching the shit out of it, so. Let's get those lines in there and we're good to go. Well, I got everything put back together. It's looking pretty good. I'm not usually wanting to spend too much time or money on making my chuck look really nice, but we got the valve cover on a deal and we already had one 12 AN, so I might as well use the same thing. And it looks super good now. I'm pretty happy with it. And it should increase performance in theory with the extra crankcase ventilation. But nothing I can measure on a log or go for a drive and show you it in any way or anything like that, so. Yeah, that's probably it for this video, so don't forget to subscribe, and uh, yeah, like the video, and maybe go watch some of my other videos, like my turbo welder. Gotta go watch the video on this thing. Ugh. I did a little more work to it, I'll show you real quick. It's really sooty up here. I built an air filter for it, and I uh, deleted the manual fuel pump and put an electric setup on there. So I don't gotta run out of worry about running out of fuel pressure when it's on boost. But yeah, it's super sooty right now because I've been messing around with my tune. But yeah, that's it for this video.